hello good morning welcome back to my channel i really appreciate everybody who's here so today i do have an apron on that means i am going to be doing some baking uh this is like we're prepping for the week it's sunday here uh where i am when i'm recording this so i'm going to make two kinds of muffins uh, so we can get back into that morning, have something to grab and go, and take with us on the way to work, on the way to school. Um, Olivia has had her midwinter break, so I know Monday is going to be fun. Um, if any of you have kids and you know how fun it is to try to get them to get back to what we've been doing, to our regularly scheduled program, uh, could take a little bit of time. So this is one way that we can maybe make it a little bit easier, uh, have something that can grab and go. Uh, and who doesn't like a good muffin? Um, I got two different kinds. I'm going to make a banana muffin and a pumpkin muffin. Um, and I wanted to show you what I have here. So I do have some different fun muffin pans. I have here a jumbo muffin pan, um, the regular size, and the mini. So since I have the um, two different ones, I'm going to make the banana ones in the giant and the... Um, pumpkin ones in the mini muffin. Of course, if you just have the regular muffin tin, that is totally fine. Um, but I just thought I'd show you the different options. This definitely, you know, makes you feel like you're having a bakery muffin. Um, and then the mini muffins, I'll go ahead and, and once they're all the way cooled, put them in a little Ziploc so it's, um, you know, like you bought them from the store. And so you have, uh, I'll put even an extra one, six little muffins in there. <laughs> Everybody complains there's not enough muffins in there. So let's uh, I'll get these out of the way because we need these last, and I will, uh, let's get to the recipe. Okay, so the first muffin is a banana muffin, banana nut. I got this off of the Splenda website, so I am going to be using um, Splenda. I'm actually, shh, don't tell them I'm using Kroger brand Splenda. Um, so the first thing, um, you're going to need some overripe bananas. And you mash them up into your bowl. calls for one and a quarter cup banana but um, I find that to be about three I'm not going to take it back out and measure it or do anything like that you need a tablespoon of oil and then a third of a cup of buttermilk um so I had bought this buttermilk in the past um, it is on the baking aisle and it's powder in here I bought it in the past to make my own ranch dip um, which was okay, but I'm really happy with the powdered ranch dip that I buy, the um, other brand, the, um, I'll think of it. <laughs> so, but I have used this now a couple times to make buttermilk because it calls for one third cup buttermilk in this recipe. And so um, on the carton, it just tells you how to make it and it's worked out really good. A couple tablespoons of vanilla and I'm gonna mix this up um, you can do the two separate bowls this recipe has come out fine for me when I just mix it all in one bowl I'm going to put in one and a third cup of flour um, you want to level off your flour um, when you're putting it in there Um, this is a half cup, so I'm going to do two of these. I do also um, try to mix up the flour and, like, get it fluffy. Um, you don't want to pack it down. You don't want packed down flour like you do when you're doing brown sugar that you want to pack the brown sugar. But flour, you want it kind of fluffy in the um, measuring cup. Now we are going to put in a half a cup of Splenda. 
Um, everybody in my family has eaten these muffins and nobody, I don't think that they knew it was Splenda and I had no complaints, so that's always a good thing. Now your baking powder and baking soda. It is one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Of course, I will link the recipe for you. Um, I was looking for a Splenda recipe and so I decided I'm just gonna go right to their website, which was um, the right thing to do because this recipe has come out perfect every time. And then you're gonna put in a teaspoon of cinnamon and a pinch of salt. Don't skip the salt on your, the cat's playing with his new um, scratching post if you hear him. So it's one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of salt, or quarter, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So this is a quarter, just gonna do half of that. Um, don't skip on the salt on your sweet things. That um, really does make a difference. The two um, balance each other out. The recipe that I'm working off of has this go into a muffin pan, or I'm sorry, a loaf pan. So it's a um, loaf dish. So a loaf pan um, is going to bake at 350 for about an hour. The jumbo muffin tin is closer to 20 minutes. Obviously keep an eye on it. I'm probably going to check it at about you know, 15 and see if it needs the full other five or not. And the last thing I'm going to add in here, you don't want to over mix. It looks mixed enough. And then your quarter cup of walnuts. going to um, spray it because I do not have any um, large uh, liners. I only sprayed five because when I've done this before I usually only get five. I would like a really good muffin. Like you know, like I said, when you've gone to the bakery and you're going to get one of those giant muffins. Um, so if I get six I can spray the last one. muffins out of it. They look pretty even. I would say they're a third of the way full, maybe half of the way full. Um, I'm going to throw these in a 350 degree oven. Uh, like I said, I'll check them at 15 minutes. They're probably going to take closer to 20 though, um, but I do not like an overbaked muffin. So I will be back, get everything ready, and we will make some pumpkin mini muffins. Okay, here I am ready to make some pumpkin muffins. I just wiped out my bowl so it's not perfectly clean, but it is going to be fine. This recipe is from the book called 100 Days of Real Food by Lisa Leakey. I will write out the recipe if I can't find a link or a link to her book or something like that. So she talks about eating whole foods, meaning, you know, as close to original as possible. So this one, her recipe calls for um, spelt or whole wheat flour. Um, I have a local bulk food store and so I picked up some whole wheat flour. Uh, this looks really good. It doesn't, you know, even look like what I thought it was going to be much darker, thicker, uh, but it's actually whole wheat baking flour. I did buy the one that said it was for baking because I think that makes it ground finer. So it looks more like regular flour. So we're going to do one and a half cups. And I liked the um, bulk food store because I could uh, do this by a little bit. Try this recipe, try maybe another recipe, and see whether I like it, whether I want to um, get more and, you know, use this more often um, or just swap it out some of the times. So there's my one and a half cups of flour. 
Um, because it is pumpkin, you're going to use some pumpkin pie spice flavoring. It calls for a tablespoon. So you'll get to get these flavors out again. While it's still a little chilly, I think it's good. Everybody will still appreciate the flavor. Um, obviously, it's a very Thanksgiving and on through Christmas. Lots of people make things with this flavoring, of course. And we're gonna do one teaspoon of baking soda. I'm gonna just scrape it across the board there. And a half a teaspoon each of baking powder and salt. Again, don't skip the salt on your savory dishes, or your sweet dishes, sorry. Um, don't skip the salt on your sweet dishes. They definitely add something to it. Okay, we're just gonna give this a quick little mix so it all comes together. No pockets of that pow um, pumpkin pie flavor. Make a little hole in the middle. In this recipe, then, it says to put the next things in the middle. We're going to use two eggs. And a third of a cup of melted butter, which I have right here. It cooled a little bit, so that's good, so it's not cooking the eggs. And this recipe uses honey as the sweetener. So that's why I got this um, type of spatula out, because in order to get my honey out of my, it's a half a cup of honey. Let's see if I can get it all out. I probably only have a half a cup in this container, but I thought I would measure it just to be sure. All that honey just smells so good. Probably going to be even a little shy. How patient I am. I'm going to use this spatula so I can get all of it out of there at the bottom. Now we're going to mix this in. I'm going to break up the eggs and kind of mix them. And she said, you know, warning to not over mix. So just kind of get everything incorporated. And then at the last thing you're going to do is mix in the um, pumpkin puree. So you want to make sure that you just have 100% um, pumpkin puree. The only ingredient should be pumpkin. Um, don't know what it is on this container. That might be it there, pumpkin. Um, I measured out one cup. So here's my one cup pumpkin puree. Hold this all in. I'm just folding it over. Everything mixed. Yeah, just mixing with a um, spatula or a spoon here is working really well. I wouldn't use a beater or anything because you really don't like to overmix the dough. I'm seeing little streaks of the flour, so. A little bit of mixing there, but there we go. That looks good to me. Now I am going to use the mini muffin tin. Again, I don't have liners or anything, so I am going to have to spray it. And I think 
think that my little small, I believe they call this like a number one, um, the cookie scoop, they're, they're numbered in sizes, um, but this small regular cookie scoop, I believe it's gonna be great. Let me go grab the banana muffins, take a look at them, see if they're ready. That's what the beeping is. Okay, so I took these out of the oven. It ended up being a total of 22 minutes. I kind of checked them um, a few different times at 18 and then 20 and then 22. Um, I did the toothpick test. Now you do have to remember that there's some banana in here, so you have to maybe you know try it again on another corner or whatever because you could just be getting all banana. Um, I wanted to show you this too. I don't know um, who, if you've had one or seen one, a cooling rack for your baked goods. Um, this is a really important step. You could have um, baked your muffins perfectly to the perfect temperature, and if you feel like they're always overbaked, you do have to get them out of the pan to cool on the cooling rack. Um, this is an important step because, of course, this pan is hot. It's going to retain its heat and it's going to keep cooking them. So you wanna get them out, give them some space. That's why the cooling rack is good. It's got some space underneath it and it can let everything cool. I've done this before. Probably don't recommend using your hands, but um, like I said, I've done it quite a few times before. This one I see is sticking. Use my toothpick to get it loose. There we go. There we go, so I'll let those cool and show you that I did fill all of my mini muffins, the pumpkin muffins. This cookie scoop made it so fast. It was a great, um, great tool to use. So if you have one of those, grab it, get it out. Um, so these mini ones, again, you're gonna wanna watch it and keep an eye on it. Every oven is quite different. These are all baking at 350. Um, so a mini muffin, it says anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes. So again, um, at the 12 minute mark, I'm gonna check it. They're gonna go much faster, they're so small. Um, so I will let you know how long they took for me and show you when they come out. All right, here we are. Uh, these pumpkin muffins, this smell in my house is amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to dig into all these muffins. Um, so let me just see if you can see the little, so it comes out perfectly clean. Um, this ended up being 15 minutes. Um, but I did watch it, same thing, I ended up at like the 12 minute mark, and then I was like, okay, two more minutes, okay, one more minute, so um, I was really keeping an eye on them. I'm going to get them on my tray here to cool with my other muffins. Here's the banana muffin. Let's go ahead and do a little taste test on these because they've cooled enough. So there's banana and walnuts and everything in there. Mmm. I had a big chunk of banana. It's delicious. It's a great breakfast. Um, it feels good for me to have the Splenda in there instead of all the sugar. Same thing with the pumpkin ones. It's honey instead of having all the sugar. I know honey sugar, but um, it just makes you feel better in the morning, giving everybody something healthy, um, you know, to get out the door with. And the Pumpkin ones also have, you know, pumpkin, which is a vegetable <laughs> in there, and it's made with a whole wheat flour. So really, really good. I hope you try out one of these recipes. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, leave me a comment. Um, what are your favorite muffins? Do you guys like them for breakfast? Um, have you tried them making any kinds of muffins? And I just want to say once again, thank you so much that I believe that every day is a gift from God and you spending part of your day watching me is really special to me and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.